The modern electric aircraft has given a new lease of life to innovation within the aviation sector. All around the globe, there has been progress and development to capture this emerging urban air mobility and regional transportation market. From Brazil to Germany, South Africa to Japan, hundreds of companies have mushroomed. But there is one country that has emerged as a major force in furthering this technology, and that is China. While there are dozens of electric aviation startups in China, in this video we will cover only the major contenders that seem to have the finance, the engineering resources, and a viable products. China has several advantages when it comes to the production of EV toll. First is the completely self-contained supply chain for electric aircraft. While China may not yet produce all the components required for conventional aircraft, but for electric aircraft, it does produce all parts, hardware, and software within its borders. From avionics to motors to lithium-ion batteries, from airframe to propulsion systems, from communication and control systems to energy systems, everything is available locally. The second advantage China has is its very proactive aviation authority. While rules and regulations for electric aircraft are still evolving in Western aviation agencies, the Civil Aviation Authority of China or the CAAC has already chalked out its policy in 2019. This has given China another leg up in the competition. And then there is also the very receptive market within China and in Asia. For example, the archipelagic nations in the Pacific, which we will come to shortly. Lastly, there are some key enabler technologies that China has a better grasp on. For example, the 5G communication network and air traffic management software. And there are future electric propulsion technologies in which China is miles ahead. For example, the ionic propulsion and plasma propulsion technology. Recently, China has completed its own narrow body passenger carrier, namely the Comex C919. The aircraft unfortunately saw six year delay with one of the main reasons being the supply issues. About 60% of Comex C919 parts were supplied by American companies. The aircraft development was impacted by the blacklisting of shipment of jet engine and flight control components. This has given China a new impetus for self-reliance and with electric aviation technology, it has the ability to do that as the most complex machinery, namely the jet engine, is out of the equation. Managing tight airspace with multiple flying machines is also a challenge for urban air mobility and China has taken giant strides towards it. One may have come across dazzling displays of drone light shows that have become a feature of New Year displays across the globe. These are only possible through robust control and communication systems. These systems have been indigenously developed by China. Let's now look at some of the Chinese electric aviation companies that are going to break into the market earlier than their Western counterparts. One of the most featured aircraft that has come out of China is by Ehang, who were early adopters and have been flight testing since 2016. Their multi-rotor passenger drone aircraft, namely the Ehang 184, was introduced as early as 2014. After extensive testing, the Ehang 216 was rolled out, which doubled the amount of coaxial rotors that were four in the Ehang 184 to eight. There are three variants of the 216. First is a two passenger carrier capable of autonomous flight. The second is a cargo variant carrying payloads of up to 260 kg with a maximum flight range of 35 km. And then there is also a variant that has been developed for firefighting in high rise buildings. Ehang is set to start operation for tourist flights with the 216 in Guangzhou where it has already developed a 5G capable vertiport. More interestingly, Indonesia's Regent Aviation has ordered 100 units of the 216. The idea is to provide services for island hopping for islands around Bali. It may take a while before operations are allowed in urban environments, but for travel between islands, the idea of deploying electric aircraft is not only lower risk, but also very lucrative. 
Eheng is also developing a longer range lift plus cruise EV toll, namely the VT30. While this aircraft has still not entered production, it has received orders from Japan. The second Chinese startup that can give companies like Vertical Aerospace, Joby Aviation, and Eve Urban Air Mobility a run for their money is Autoflight. Its aircraft, the V1500M, falls in the same category as the VAX4 and Joby S4. It can carry four passengers with a maximum payload of 1500 kilograms. The founder of the company, Tian Yu, has experience of developing a certified electric aircraft under his belt. He developed the unique E430 that took its maiden flight back in 2009. This aircraft earned the German DULV certification and also airworthiness certification by the FAA in 2013. The out of flight proof of concept aircraft called Prosperity has already completed its test flight in October 2021 and is on course for passenger transport by 2025. The company is also developing cargo drones. In September 2020, they unveiled an EV toll called the V400 for cargo delivery with up to 100 kilograms payload. It has successfully completed 2.5 hour flight time with 100 kilograms payload. One of the most cash-rich companies in China is Xpeng. It has recently received $500 million worth of investment for developing a true flying car. Note that Xpeng already has extensive experience of developing a multi-rotor aircraft. In fact, starting from 2013, it claims to have conducted more than 15,000 successful crewed test flights. Its most recent model is the fifth generation all-electric X2, a two-seat multi-copter designed to cruise at a maximum speed of 130 kilometers per hour with an endurance of 35 minutes. Recently, the X2 was showcased in a future launch event in Europe. It plans to fly in Europe in the first half of 2022. The latest objective for Xpeng is to develop a street legal car that can transform into a flying machine when needed. It's an ambitious target, but the company has the resources and expertise to embark on such a venture. Note that Xpeng already develops electric cars. Speaking of cars, the Geely Group, which is one of the largest private automobile companies in China and owns Volvo and Lotus, among others, is also delving into EV tolls. Their aircraft, the Terrafugia TF2A, is very similar to the VT30 by Ehang. It is a twin boom lift plus cruise configuration with eight lifting rotors and one pusher propeller. Geely has also announced that it planned a joint venture between its subsidiary, Aerofugia, and Volocopter, which will be based in Chengdu, China. The other notable mentions are the Volant Aerotech VT25 and the MuYu Aero EV4, which are very similar in design and again use the lift plus cruise configuration with capacity of five and four passengers respectively. There is also the T-Cab E20, a five-seater EV tow, which has a design that looks very similar to the Joby S4, but not all of its propellers tilt and two are fixed lifting rotors. And last but not the least, we have the Pantuo Pantala Concept Edge. This aircraft has a striking resemblance to the Lilium jet. Pantuo claims that their aircraft is very different in flight characteristics because of two reasons. First is the size of the ducted fans, which are much larger, and second is the tilt wing configuration. Note that in Lilium, the ducted fans are mounted on the flaps and only the flaps tilt, not the whole wing. So it seems that China is targeting the electric urban air mobility and regional transport sector very seriously. The configuration of choice is lift plus cruise, which can be seen in most of their designs. From a practical point of view, it is also the configuration that can get the certification relatively easily. I hope you have learned something from this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.